Hi everybody, Nick from F-Zero Camera here. Today I'm gonna to show you some of the first sample images that I took with my production F-Zero camera. All of these images were taken on the exact same camera that I've been showing from the assembly videos. And all the images that you see here are actually from video. So I shot this on my Canon R5C in video mode. And then I just found some little moments here that I really like. And those are the, the sample images that I'm going to be showing you. And if I, you know, hit play, obviously these images move. And so this does work as a video setup. Um, it might not play in real time because this is from the, the 8K RAW coming off of the R5C. Uh, but the point is, it's, it's kind of nice to shoot this way in video because with such a shallow depth of field, it can be nice to sort of dial in your focus and then afterward find just those perfect little moments that that look so nice um so i'm just showing you i'm just going through real quick some of these images and then uh in a second i'll take you into the the coloring process to show you exactly how i colored all of these but these give you such a good you know impression of the kinds of images you can get with this camera so what this does is it takes that super shallow depth of field from the, the objective lens, which is nominally a 500 millimeter f4, but because we have this expanded field of view from the large format image circle, it just gives you an image that, that you can't see in any other way or any other setting. Um, you know, this, this is the field of view of a 67 millimeter full frame lens, but obviously this depth of field is something else like my wife has her her feet crossed uh, in the background but you know that might as well be a dinosaur for all we can see it's totally out of focus and in my opinion it's it's beautiful it's just such an interesting look so here's my coloring process in davinci resolve if you aren't familiar with resolve it's just a wonderful editing program I come from the stills world and have been slowly getting into the video and cinema world over the past 10 years or so, and I just love Resolve. Um, at first, it may look a little daunting with all these nodes if you're not familiar with them, but um, if you're using them in a serial mode like I am here, it's just like layers, basically. They're just organized differently. You can do a lot more with parallel nodes and splitting things and... You know, I have one little combined node here, which is the detail node. I'll get to that in a second, but it's it's just three more nodes. It's, they're just collapsed. But anyway, um, so what are all these things doing? Well, a lot of the heavy lifting is doing is, is right here in a node called Film Convert. It's a really nice film emulation plugin that just takes our raw footage, which is gray. It's in this. This is in C log three, which is. Um, capturing the broadest possible color information that the camera can provide and it's mapping it in this logarithmic format so that we take best advantage of the camera's dynamic range and then the film convert plugin is is colorizing it um, now this node here is just for exposure it was about a stop over where i wanted it to be because i was trying to keep the shadows cleaner so i exposed to the right basically just before clipping and then i'm bringing it down here and then these two nodes are uh doing some vignette correction so one is just doing the corners you can see they're real dark here without it and i brighten it up and then this one is just darkening the center from a little brighter to darker so if i take off both of them it's going to be real dramatic um but that's with the film emulation if we turn that off in log you can see we still have lots of color information but when we turn them all back on it's nice and smooth um, that's the benefit both of shooting raw and shooting on these modern digital sensors is you get this really nice high dynamic range that you can play with later uh, this camera is the single fresnel lens version as i showed in the assembly video if we had used two fresnel lenses that vignetting would be far less extreme but um and the way that i'm doing that is not with a vignette plugin but rather with this thing called a power window in resolve so you can draw these shapes so this is a circle shape and then this handle is controlling the feathering of that circle how hard the edge is so you can see as i as i drop that in it becomes a real harsh circle and as i 
spread it out, it becomes a smoother circle. And then same thing for the other one. And we can position these where we want to, to give exactly the effect that we're looking for. Um, and then once I've drawn that shape, I go over here into the HDR wheel and I just change the exposure. So this one's coming down 7 tenths of a stop. This one's going up 1.6 stops. So we have about a two stop difference between the center and the corners, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, next note is the primaries. I'm just dragging some colors around to make them where I want. So without the primaries node, you can see it's a little bit more blue, a little bit more magenta in the skin tones, and then turning it on, we get a little bit more green back in, putting the skin tones back where we want. This is just a little curves adjustment layer, uh, you know, just adding some brightness and contrast, just kind of finalizing the exposure. Uh, this detail is just a couple of really small, like mid-tone detail and sharpness adjustments. So if I turn it off, you barely notice a difference and then back on. So it's just smoothing things out. It's nice for skin tones. It's just a couple of instances of Resolve's Beauty plugin and then a very light sharpening pass. That's all it is. Um, I've already shown you film convert. This final node is something that I find super handy. It's uh, a DCTL by this company called Mono Nodes. And when you turn it on, it maps skin tones to these really intense colors. So yellow is where we're right on the skin tone line. Green is where our skin is shifting green and magenta is where our skin tones are shifting magenta off of the skin tone line. And that's actually about what you want. I mean, you can play with things as you want, but generally a neutral skin tone will show slight green in the highlights and slight magenta in the shadows and mostly in the yellow elsewhere. And of course, depending on the look you want, you can, you can change how that's presented. But um, so that's the workflow. And then I have this little grain and black and white nodes that if I want to turn them on, this becomes a little bit more of like a black and white style presentation. It's just uh, cutting the saturation, doing a little curves adjustments, and then adding a little bit of grain. But let's turn those back off. So that's, that's all that I've got in these nodes, and it's pretty much the same for uh, every, every clip that you see here. Sometimes I do different things with these vignette corrections depending on what I wanted the light to look like, but it's all a pretty basic setup. And again, I really like shooting in video so that I can, you know, I'm getting 24 opportunities every single second to find the perfect shot and you just leave the camera running. The data rates are not terrible. Uh, you're gonna notice some of the, you know, the little specks in my sensor cause it's not pristine clean, but uh, you know, you can easily correct those with a little bit of patch replacer or uh, other tools, noise reductions, but um, yeah, this is sort of everything I was hoping this camera would be. Uh, it's a way to get images that is unique and not strictly possible with any other tools out there. So I've been super happy with this camera. I, I hope all of you, as you're building up your cameras, are finding the same sort of joy and wonder in discovering these new possibilities in terms of how to create images. And uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And uh, best of luck with all of you creating your own unique F-Zero images. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.